Okay, I need to call back the people I met during the event. That mark was such a great fit for us. Perfect size, perfect stack. And he was open for a demo. I should find his number. Oh my god. Oh, I forgot to get his number. I'm so screwed. <sighs> Without phone numbers, you're stuck. No discovery call, no pitch, no proposal. In sales, a phone number is the first step. If you don't have the number, it's like trying to start a car without the keys. Nothing moves, even if the tank is full. That's why this video is all about helping you find verified phone numbers fast, so you never miss a chance to close again. We'll show you the free tools, paid platforms, smart search tricks, so you get all the methods that gives you the best shot at getting actual working numbers without wasting time on money. Whether you want to find a colleague's number or build a complete list of 1,000 verified contacts ready to be cold called, we've got you covered. Let's start with the free methods, reverse lookup tools, and people search engines. If you're trying to find someone's phone number, free tools are the easiest place to start. You don't need an account and you don't need a subscription. Just a name, maybe a city, and a little page. But there's a catch. Most of these tools rely on old, public data. They dig into phone books, voter registrations, online directories, and whatever people forgot to hide online years ago. That means the results are hit or miss, especially for mobile numbers, and especially outside the US. Let's break it down, starting with the most common ones. White pages and yellow pages, you've heard of them. These are modern versions of the phone book. You enter a name in a city, and they return any listed landlines for that match. White pages also support reverse lookups. Type in a number, and it'll show you who it might belong to. These tools work best if you're looking for someone with an older, published landline, like a long-time homeowner, older contact, or smaller business owner. They're useful if the person hasn't moved in a while and has kept the same number. But they don't include cell phones, and the data can be outdated if someone changed numbers or switched locations. Anywho does something similar. You search by name and location, but its database is more limited. Results often include several people with the same name. Oops. And there's no easy way to tell them apart. Unless you know them personally, you probably don't. You also have to browse everything manually. That makes it harder if you're looking at more than just one contact. And again, it mostly pulls landline listings. Spy Dialer. This one was built by a licensed private investigator named Robert Scott. He's worked on real cases and used his research to create a tool anyone could use. Spy Dialer is primarily used to identify the owner of a phone number, email address, or physical address. But again, it's US only. And it doesn't verify if a number is current. It just tells you what's been publicly available. All of these tools work using public data. So they're fast, free, and require no sign-up. But they cannot guarantee accuracy. And they don't work for mobile numbers, international contacts, or leads at scale. These tools are best when you just have a few names and want to run quick checks. Not when you need dozens of verified contacts that work right now. Quick tips if you're using any of them. Try using a middle initial or searching with and without one. If someone moved recently, try their old city. Add an age if you know it. It helps now with results. Always double check any number you find. The data might be outdated, incomplete, or just belong to someone else. Social media and messaging platforms. If public directories didn't get you the number, the next place to look is social media. Nearly everybody's on there. People often add their contact info to profiles, sometimes without even realizing it. Others don't list their phone numbers. They leave behind just enough to make contact. Sometimes a number isn't available, but it might still be linked behind the scenes, if you know where to look. Here's how to use the main platforms in a smart way. Facebook. Older Facebook profiles often leave a phone number in the About section. Go to someone's profile, click About, then Contact and Basic Info. If you're Facebook friends or the profile's public, you might see their number listed there. Also, Facebook search bar can work like a reverse lookup. Type in a number, and if it's linked to an account that hasn't disabled the lookup by phone feature, the profile will show up. Now for business contacts, LinkedIn is the go-to. Now, while phone numbers aren't public, if you're a first-degree connection, check the contact info section. Some users include a phone number there for direct outreach. LinkedIn Premium or Sales Navigator display phone numbers automatically. But with Sales Navigator, you get deeper filters to narrow down prospects. It doesn't reveal phone numbers by default, but you might find contact info on some profiles. If you already have a number, or a few guesses, you can check them using messaging apps like WhatsApp or Telegram. Add the number to your phone's contacts then open the app. If the number is registered, you might see a profile photo, display name, or last seen status. It's not full verification, but it's a strong signal. Just be careful. Don't message people you don't know and avoid sending anything that might feel intrusive. Social platforms won't always show you the number directly, but between contact sessions, reverse search tricks, and messaging apps, you can often confirm if a number is real or find another way to reach out. These tools rely on how much someone shares, so results may vary. 
but when the info is there, it's fast and it doesn't cost a thing. Now for search engines. Say you've got a name, maybe a company, but no number. Search engines, especially Google, can help you dig up what's buried online. The trick is knowing how to search. So pull out your shovel, because you're not just typing in a name and hoping for the best. You're using the right combinations of keywords, sites, and formats to surface hidden contact info. Stuff that's public, but not easy to spot. Here's how to do your digging step by step. Use quotation marks and keywords. Let's say you're looking for someone named John Doe, because of course you are. Try this in Google, John Doe and phone or contact. Then add where you think their number might be listed, like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, or even their company site, you get it. And cite linkedin.com or cite companyname.com. This tells Google only show me results where these specific terms and sites are mentioned together. Add more context. If John Doe works at Acme Inc, try John Doe and Acme Inc and phone or contact. This narrows down your search to matches with both the name and company. It works well for team pages, bios, and blog posts where contact info is sometimes shared casually. Try common contact phrases. People often share their numbers in posts, forums, and ads using phrases like call me at, phone number, text me at, reach me at, phone number is, you get the point. So you could try this, John Doe, call me at, or text me at, or telephone, or phone number is. This surfaces comments, bios, and responses where someone mentioned the number in plain language. Google Business and Maps. If you're trying to reach a local business or someone who works for one, just Google the business name. You'll often see their phone number right in the results or in the Google Maps listing. It's perfect for front desks or customer support lines. A few tips. Try nicknames or alternative spellings if the name is common. Add the person's city or job title to filter better. If you find a partial number, like just the area code, try searching it with the name. Search engines don't give you phone numbers directly, but they help you connect the dots. It's all about the search logic. Now for company websites and directories. If the person works at a company, don't skip their website. Team page, contact us, sections, and press releases can all hold hidden gems. Big companies rarely list direct numbers, but small businesses, they often post a phone number tied to the owner or manager, especially if it's the only line they've got. Even if the site doesn't list the person, you can usually find a general number and call in. Use the company's main line and ask for the person by name. Receptionists can transfer your call or confirm if the person works there, or if they even exist. Sometimes you just don't know. It's old school, but it works, especially if you have a clear reason for reaching out. If the person is in a licensed profession, such as a lawyer, doctor, or a real estate agent, check their association's directory. Many of these sites publish contact info, including phone numbers, as part of their public profile. Now for paid methods. The main limitation with the free methods is that you can't find phone numbers at scale. You're stuck running one search at a time with outdated data and no way to verify if the number still works. They give you access to larger databases, more accurate info and advanced ways to search. Starting with people search and background check services. Let's say you've got almost nothing to go on. No email, no job title, just a name. People search tools like Bean Verified, Spokio or Truthfinder can help fill in the blanks. These platforms collect data from a wide range of public and private sources. Everything from court records and property filings, to social media profiles and old directory listings. Some, like Spokio, even pull from proprietary databases and offer a search concierge to go deeper. Pretty cool. You can search by name, phone number, email address, or even social media handle. And the results? Usually a full profile with past and present phone numbers, email addresses, locations, and sometimes even relatives or known associates. Nice. But it's not designed for business use. You won't find verified job titles or up-to-date business contact info. And it's important to note these platforms are not FCRA compliant, which means that legally you can't use them for outbound. People databases. If you're looking for professional contact, someone in a company, a decision maker, a lead, B2B databases are built exactly for that. These tools don't just guess, they search millions of business profiles to give you work phones, emails, and sometimes even mobile phone numbers. These platforms are built for scale, not one-off lookups. They're often used by sales teams, recruiters, and growth people who need dozens of contacts a week. Access can be pricey, and the data isn't always verified with the person. Some numbers are accurate, others might be old. Still, they can give you direct lines most public tools will never show. Let's go over the main ones. Zoom Info. This is one of the biggest databases used by large sales teams. It tracks 46 million direct dials and pulls info from company websites, job boards, partnerships, and more. It often gives you a work phone and in many cases, a mobile number too. Lucia. 
Lusha is popular with individual users and small teams. It's a browser extension. You visit someone's LinkedIn profile and Lusha pulls their contact info with one click. Just remember, many of these numbers are personal, so use them responsibly. Other tools in this space are Apollo.io, Hunter.io, Rocket Search, Lead IQ, Clearbit, Cognizant. They all help you find business contact info. And there are more. Most started with email, but now include phone data too. Again, for a few tips. If you already have a business email, try email and waiting for a reply. The number might be in the signature. It'll save you credits. Conference bios and press releases often include direct contact numbers for speakers and executives. Everything we've seen so far works, but only up to a point. Free tools are inconsistent and single usage. B2B databases are powerful, but really, really expensive. Let's take a look at the actual cost per number from the big players. Zoom Info can charge up to $3 per phone number. Lucia averages $1.10 to $1.23. Even mid-tier tools like Datagma are around $0.59 cents to $0.78. Cents. And that's before you get into contracts, annual plans and credit limits. If you just want to find the number and call, none of these tools make it easy. Here's how Lemlist solves all of that. With Waterfall Enrichment, Lemlist checks data from four top providers, one after the other. If the first one can't find the number, it tries the second, then the third, then the fourth, and so on. That's how you get the maximum coverage and accuracy, around 75%, I believe, without paying four times the cost. And here's the difference that matters. On Lemlist, one phone number, 20 cents. I know, no contracts, no minimums, no commitments. You get free credits every month, and if you need more, you just pay as you go. Makes sense, right? But it's not just about finding the number. Once you've got it, Lemlist lets you call the lead right away, using the built-in dial, of course, sets reminders to follow up later, and syncs everything with your CRM, so your contact data updates automatically. It's everything the big databases do, just smarter, simpler, and 10 times more affordable. Plus, with the Lemlist Chrome extension, you get 25 free phone numbers each month. So here's the bottom line. There are plenty of ways to find phone numbers. Some are free, some are paid, but the real key is doing it smartly. So you don't spend hours digging or hundreds of dollars chasing dead leads. If you're just trying to connect with someone, free tools and a quick search might be enough. If you're doing B2B outreach, you'll want data that's accurate, affordable, and built for scale, which is exactly where tools like Lemlist come in. So no matter which method you use, respect privacy laws like GDPR and CCPA, especially if you're collecting or using phone numbers for marketing. Check do not call lists in your country before dialing. And if you do reach out, be transparent about how you got their number. If someone asks not to be contacted again, honor that. No excuses. I'm not kidding. Use the tools, find the info, and call responsibly. Now put that shovel away. Uh, no more cooperative music. We're just going to be doing all of our own songs, just ad libs. That's it. We should open a studio.